Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm not going to be doing any ordinary trick integral or something like that. I, I'm going to be finding the value of the Gaussian integral using Laplace transforms. So let's get to it. Firstly, what, what is the Gaussian integral? So I'm going to use the letter G g for a gaussian integral so the gaussian integral is basically integral from 0 to infinity e raised to negative x squared dx so the exponent has this uh, square x squared term this quadratic term and it's an improper integral so let's let's make this substitution first let u equals x squared you know that's what we would naturally want to do to see whether this uh, takes on a simpler form after substitution so u substitution let u equal x squared so du is naturally 2x dx when you differentiate this so dx is nothing but du over 2x and what's x so taking square root we have square root of u so du over 2 root u that's your x so g now becomes integral so upper the lower bound so when x is x squared is 0 x is 0, x squared is 0, u becomes 0. When uh, x tends to infinity, x squared also tends to infinity, therefore u tends to infinity. e raised to negative u and dx is du over 2 root u. So now looking at this expression, there is literally nothing we can do because even if we were to try using integration by parts on this we have a fractional power for the for the u that to a negative power this is 1 over square root of u is u to the negative half power right so half times du times u to the negative half power right and even if we were to use integration by parts and we were to differentiate u to the negative half power we would just keep on reducing this power inf infinitely many times or even if we were to integrate this it would be no good because we would always have a fractional power we would uh, this this process of integration by parts would just keep repeating itself so i hope you are convinced that uh, this this is, is cannot be done with any elementary integration techniques and as the title of the video suggested and as i declared at the start of the video let's use laplace transforms to calculate the gaussian integral g so let's use laplace transforms and as always i'm going to do this elaborate procedure on a fresh page see you there so let's remember that we had we had a, a gaussian integral after substitution equal to integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative u divided by 2 root u du but for using laplace transforms as i said we need a function of t because what was a laplace transform let me write the definition of a laplace transform again in case you missed that first introductory video of the laplace transform so a laplace transform say of a function of t and it's always a function of t is defined as integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative st times f of t dt and, th and this transform out outputs a different function 
which is a function of s. So for the Laplace transform, I hope it's clear that we need a function of t. So this this gen this special case g is not going to work. We need to somehow parameterize g and make it a function of t like we do for Leibniz rule. So we need to parameterize this thing and uh, you know define a, a free parameter t. So I'm going to call the parameterized form of the Gaussian integral to be i of t so that you know there is no confusion between letters. So let i of t equal integral from 0 to infinity e raised to negative u times the parameter t now I'm adding the free parameter divided by 2 root u du. So you might notice there is a there is a great similarity between the Gaussian integral and the parameterized form of that integral. And, and how are they related because their relation is going to be useful for us by the end of the video. So notice that when t equals 1, so i of t when t equals 1 is just our Gaussian integral because u times 1 is just u. So we obtain just a, a u, a negative u when we plug t equals 1 in i of t. So this relation is very helpful. Let's remember this. Now having defined our, the, the parameterized form of the Gaussian integral which indeed is a function of t. Let's take the Laplace transform on both sides. So Laplace transform with this fancy curly bracket of i of t is equal to the Laplace transform of this entire integral. We don't have a, just a simple function in this case over here. We have an integral. So e raised to negative ut divided by 2 root u and uh, don't forget the du. So plugging this in our original formula that I wrote in this light orange color we have integral from 0 to infinity. The external integral is the dt integral. So e raised to negative st. And inside of that we have this integral because that was the function f of t. e raised to negative ut divided by 2 root u du and the external dt. So it's like it's an it's a nested integral r Laplace transform in this case is a nested integral. So what do we do now? So going further, we assume uniform convergence and why is that you may ask? That's because this assuming uniform convergence will enable us to interchange these two integrals and uh, proving uniform convergence and the conditions for interchanging these integrals are, are too mathematically rigorous even for my level. So uh, let's just assume it for now and do this. So we finally obtain the Laplace transform of i of t is well the dt integral is taken inside the du integral. So integral from 0 to infinity of uh, we can take uh, a common factor of t, so negative s plus u times t over here, divided by 2 root u and dt du. And I forgot this uh, external integral of du. So now notice that the inside integral is, is an integral over dt or over variable t. So u is 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 can be treated as a constant right because it does not depend on t it doesn't have any we don't have any terms of t here so we, we can take it out of the inner integral we have integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 root u and inside integral is integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative s plus u times t dt du so let's go ahead and integrate this with respect to t. 
so we integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 times square root of u times well we have to divide by the coefficient of t in this case which is negative s plus u so 1 over negative s plus u so I'll, I'll just bracket this properly so that there's no confusion and uh, e raised to negative s plus u times t term as it is because we're dealing with exponentials here and but evaluate that from t equals infinity to t equals zero and uh, we have still the du integral left so we integral from zero to infinity of one over two root u so at infinity well, as as t tends to infinity e raised to negative some arbitrary sum of constants times t will blow off to zero so at infinity this becomes zero and minus the zero so when t equals zero we have e raised to zero which is one divided by uh, this s plus u and the negatives will cancel out because we had a minus t uh, the t equals zero uh, substitution so we will have uh, 1 over s plus u du so we got rid of our t part now let's simplify this integral so that, so that we obtain a compact form for the Laplace transform of i of t but notice this uh, square root of u and a, and a single u over here we need to get rid of this square root of u because this, this is creating a lot of troubles so let's make another substitution let u equals let u equal y squared so that we have a du being equal to 2y dy on differentiation and notice that upper and lower bounds also stay same because when u equals 0 y squared will also be 0 and when u tends to infinity y squared will also tend to infinity so that's a great thing of these improper in in integrals most of the time that you make these simple substitutions nothing much changes so we have 1 over 2 times square root of u is ju just y if you notice if you take the root on both sides times 1 over s is a constant so s plus u is y squared and du is nothing but 2y dy so we have a, a 2y dy term in the numerator so now notice that these terms are cancelling out nicely so we just end up with integral from 0 to infinity of dy over y squared plus I can write s as square root of s but the whole thing squared because we can just use the the uh, the, the integral formula on this resulting in, in, a, in an inverse tangent basically so we have 1 over whatever coefficient was squared so we had square root of s squared right times the inverse tangent of this variable that was squared so y is being squared y over this constant that was squared so square root of s but you still have to evaluate that from uh, in, in our case y equals infinity to y equals 0 so now by the properties of the inverse tangent when y tends to infinity so y over square root of s will also tend to infinity because if you divide say a very very large term by a small finite constant you, you still have that uh, very very large term unchanged unharmed so you'll have the inverse tangent of infinity as y tends to infinity which is well 1 over square root of s is a constant inverse tangent of infinity is pi over 2 because tan of pi over 2 was infinity minus 1 over square, square root of s which is a constant times the inverse tangent of 0 as y tends to 0 as y equals 0 0 over square root of s is 0 so tan inverse of 0 is also 0 so we don't care about this expression this is just zero so finally we have the Laplace transform of i of t 
being equal to pi over 2 times 1 over square root of s. So that's a really nice and compact form and way easier to work with going forward. So in the previous part we obtained this nice compact form of, of for the Laplace transform of i of t which was pi over 2 times 1 over the square root of s. Now we want to get rid of this Laplace transform because we want to just obtain a simple form for i of t. We just want i of t, right? So let's take the inverse Laplace transform on both sides. So we have inverse Laplace transform of the Laplace transform of i of t. You know the best part about Laplace transform is you get to use these fancy curly brackets and these curly L's. So this is going to be inverse Laplace transform of pi over 2 times 1 over square root of s. Well the inverse Laplace transform of the Laplace transform is are basically they're both gonna basically cancel each other mutually so that we end up with i of t simply being equal to well pi over 2 is a constant which can be taken outside the inverse Laplace transform operation by the properties of the properties of the inverse Laplace transform. So inverse Laplace transform of 1 over square root of s. How do we calculate this now? So to calculate this in inverse Laplace transform we have no choice but to refer back to our table of, of Laplace transforms. So you may notice that there is a formula like this. The Laplace transform of t to the power n is nothing but the gamma of gamma function of n plus 1 divided by s to the n plus 1th power. So we can recreate our 1 over square root of s because anyways if you uh, you know just invert the Laplace transform you have t to the n is equal to gamma of n plus 1 can be assumed to be a constant over the specified range it's basically an extension of the factorial times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s to the n plus 1 so only if we have n plus 1 equal to half because square root of s is s to the half so if if we can if n plus 1 is equal can be set equal to half then you know rearranging this equation we'll have the inverse laplace transform of 1 over square root of s or 1 over s to the half half power so what will n be in that case it will be half minus 1 right which is so doing this simple calculation we have obtained n equals negative half so time to plug everything again because this will enable us to have uh, 1 over square root of s term so we will have the Laplace transform of t to the negative half power so 1 over square root of t basically being equal to the gamma of n plus 1 is half so gamma of half divided by s to the one half power which is square root of s. So time to in invert the uh, Laplace transform. We obtain 1 over square root of t being equal to uh, the gamma of half is, is a constant because that integral converges. So we'll just have inverse Laplace transform of 1 over square root of s here. So just rearranging everything we have inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s being equal to 1 over square root of t times the gamma of half. So all we need further to calculate uh, the La inverse Laplace transform of 1 over square root of s is to find the value of 
uh, this gamma of one half and because inverse Laplace transform is going to be a function of t obviously because it's inverting the process of Laplace transformation so so let's find the gamma of half see you on the next page for all of you who don't know what the gamma function is let me uh, define it for you so the gamma of n also called Euler's gamma is defined as integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative x times x to the n minus 1 power dx but we have to find the gamma of half so let n equal half we have integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative x x to the half minus 1 which is negative half dx negative half is negative is basically you have to take that in the denominator and a half power is a square root so we have integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative x divided by square root of x dx now I would like to make a quick substitution I would like to let x equals u such that dx equals du and upper and lower bounds remain the same so gamma of half is nothing but integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative u over square root of u du but wait doesn't this this seem kind of kind of familiar well this is related to our gaussian integral because let's let's go back to what we obtained after u substitution after our first u substitution on the gaussian integral so the gaussian integral was basically e raised to negative u du divided by 2 root u and uh, our gamma of half is essentially the same thing integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative u du divided by square root of u x without this factor of 2 so you can say that if you take the factor of 2 on on the left hand side our gamma of half is 2 times the gaussian integral that's that's a really really nice fact so now we know that the gamma of half is 2 times the gaussian integral by using the definition of gamma so finally we have inverse Laplace transform of 1 over square root of s is nothing but 1 over square root of t times 2 times the Gaussian integral. So we are going to plug this value back into this yellow equation to obtain a, a nice form for i of t. So we have the expression for i of t and and um, we also calculated the inverse Laplace transform. So let's let's plug this over here. We have i of t now being equal to pi over 2 times 1 over square root of t times 2 times the Gaussian integral which can be written as pi over 4 root t times the Gaussian integral and now let's make the substitution let's plug in t equals 1 why is that because if you remember our original Gaussian problem our original Gaussian integral i of g was related to i of t as i of t when t equals 1 so this will be i of t when t equals 1 being equal to pi over 4 square root of 1 is just 1 4 times 1 is just 4 itself times g so pi over 4 g but what was i of t when t equals 1 our original gaussian integral right so gaussian integral is equal to pi over 4 times the gaussian integral so if you just simplify everything now taking uh, g on this g on, on top over there we have g squared being equal to pi over 4 so g is nothing but 
square root of pi over 4 which can be expressed as square root of pi divided by 2 square root of 4 is 2 so that's basically the value of the gaussian integral and it's it's pretty neat because we had an exponential to start with and then the pi just just popped in out of nowhere out of an inverse tangent that that got produced during uh, our laplace transforms so this is a, this is a quite unexpected result because there weren't even any uh, trigonometric terms in our original integrand it's 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 fascinating it's, it's just brilliant so in conclusion now we had our gaussian integral g being equal to integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative x squared dx we use laplace transforms then inverse in we took inverse of the laplace transform and we ended up with the with the neat expression of square root of pi over 2 and one interesting property of this Gaussian integral is it's symmetric about the y-axis so say we have your uh, x and y axes here so basically your, your your miniature version of the of the Gaussian integral basically scaled down uh, of this integrand e raised to negative x squared so when y equals e raised to negative x squared you're going to have this sort of bell-shaped curve which is symmetric I mean symmetry you can't it's hard to draw the symmetry I apologize for that but it's symmetric about the y-axis so whatever happens on this side we are from uh, 0 to uh, positive infinity is the same that happens on on this side from a negative infinity to 0 so so that's to say that this has a horizontal asymptote by the way just for your information uh, so that's to say that this region from 0 to infinity this area is basically square root of pi over 2 and, and this region over here from a negative infinity to 0 will have the same area as this because they are symmetric about the y-axis and we can show that because okay we have g right let's make the substitution uh, u equals negative x so du is equal to negative dx we will have upper and lower bounds as uh, 0 to negative infinity of e raised to negative 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 u x is will x will be negative u the whole thing squared and dx is negative du so because of the negative we can flip the upper and lower bounds to get integral from negative infinity to 0 of e raised to negative u squared is just u squared so negative u squared the negative that was all outside du and now notice that this is just equal to g right we have g equals to integral from 0 to infinity and g equals to that same integral from negative infinity to 0 so let's add them up so we have g plus g 2g being equal to integral from negative infinity to 0 of e raised to let's write this as x squared we can change the variable the variable is basically a dummy variable as long as you have the same upper and lower bounds that's one of the properties of definite integration plus integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative x squared dx so integral from negative infinity to 0 plus integral from 0 to infinity is equal to integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of e raised to negative x squared dx I hope you see the the linearity over there clearly is equal to 2g but we found out what, what the value of g was right square root of pi over 2 so 
2 times square root of pi over 2 is basically equal to integral from negative infinity to infinity of e raised to negative x squared dx. 2's will cancel out. We have square root of pi which is about 0 0.707. So that's a really popular result and it's useful in many fields from quantum mech to statistical analysis and uh, economics because since we get this this bell curve over here this distribution curve over here this is also used in uh, distribution in uh, condensed matter physics for example we have uh, the gaussian distribution which is uh, an important aspect of such disciplines so i hope you enjoyed this video guys uh, that's it for this video. Please like, share and subscribe. You can follow me on in Instagram too under uh, gamma underscore digamma. I do math art on, 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 on my Instagram. I, I used a uh, Desmos calculator if you're curious. So you can check that out. And uh, stay home, stay safe, have a great day. Peace out.